Hello everyone, welcome back to TCG Bulk Kings. Well, we've had a couple of requests uh, for how we go about processing such a large amount of bulk. Uh, so I figured I would try and go through the entire process from start to finish uh, and show you guys exactly what it is I'm doing. Now I'm not gonna do it for the whole 100,000 cards. Obviously that would be a really long video. Uh, so we're just gonna do this box here and the Biohazard boxes are back. Uh, this is about 550 cards, give or take 10 cards. And I'll just go through these and show you exactly what it is that I'm doing. The first thing I do is what I'm calling a first pass. This is basically where I separate inventory, which is stuff that I can immediately list for sale on the on TCG player from non-inventory, i.e. something that's below near mint and grade that's got some surface issues there. Um, just got a little rubbing on the top. So basically what we're doing is trying to separate out everything that is listable immediately from everything that isn't. And that would include, like I said, this stuff here, which is below near mint and grade, <clears throat> things that I want to hang on to. I'm trying to get a whole complete set of Jumpstart without buying a whole lot of Jumpstart, so I'm keeping anything from Jumpstart, and eventually I'll go through that and make a binder, or maybe two, two sets worth. <clears throat> One that I could draft or cube out of, and the other uh, for collecting purposes. That sounds like fun. Okay, we've got some vintage cards here too. I keep, I don't currently sell any vintage cards. I keep them all. Again, it's something I want to collect. It reminds me of high school. Like, look at this Labyrinth Minotaur. That's, look at that. That's near mint from 1995. I definitely had 20 or 30 of these when I was, like, 14. <clears throat> so, I'm keeping in all of that stuff. Uh, and also a little bit of early modern stuff like this from uh, Future Sight. Oop, this one's in Russian, so we're not going to include that. It's also got some wear on it, but we'll make a separate pile for foreign language cards. Prophecy. That was such a... Everybody hates this set, but I love this set. It's so nostalgic for me. I remember being super excited about it. I loved all the mechanics. I loved Rhystic Study. I love Chimeric Idol, which is the big time artifact from that set. The big, like, highly played artifact that uh, was winning tournaments and stuff like that. Kind of like the uh, Smuggler's Copter of its day. Had a whole deck built around that and other cards that forced you to, t you, that you got benefits from having all your lands tapped. And that was a lot of fun back in high school. So, yeah, this uh, bulk that I picked up has stuff from all over the time map. This is Weatherlight, but also I've got Time Spiral Remastered here, so. And everything in between. Goblin Cavalier. I really, really, really want to build a deck around Goblin Cavalier. <laughs> I think that's so hilarious. There's cards that... There's this uh, one card, Bludgeon Brawl, I think, that turns all non-creature artifacts into equipment with uh, equip costs and equip bonus like power bonus equal to their casting cost and so i have this deck idea where i have that out and i just make lots and lots of like treasure tokens and clue tokens and things and then freely equip them to creatures like goblin gavalier for the plus two plus oh that it gets for having an equipment attached to it or uh valduk the dominaria uncommon legend that grants extra combat steps it just seems like it'd be really fun it seems really terrible like not functional that one time you get it to function that's my uh that's my against the odds type deck okay here we go it's dissension from the original ravnica block basically everything up to eighth edition i'm sticking back so that i can go through in a detailed way and make you know kind of complete sets or at least one complete set just for me to 9th edition, not 8th edition. Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping everything up through 9th edition. And that includes uh, Mirrodin block, Kamigawa block, 
original original Ravnica block and then the Time Spiral block and when that's over with and ninth edition's over with everything after that I am selling through partially on the assumption that those are you know the first few sets the first year or two of sets in the modern card frame and they just were so low print run that the bulk is not the same as bulk from dragons of tarkir or ikoria so there's that just on a general macro level we got a french card from onslaught and then also the you know that's when i stopped playing was a couple of sets like I stopped playing right before the new card frame came out. This has got printing errors all over it. That's cool. It's not major errors, but it's a little bleeding in from the card edge here and in the text box up here. And then off the text here. That gets its own pile. It's going to go in my misprint binder. So yeah, I got out of Magic right before the new card frame happened. It's when I went to college. And then I came back in during... Uh, Guild Pact. I remember We Dragonauts was my favorite card at the time. And then I got out after that, right before Time Spiral happened. So those are all the cards that I actually remember from back in the day. And those are the latest cards I remember from back in the day. And everything after that is completely new. I, I, I got back into Magic in 2015 with Magic Origin and Battle for Zendikar. You see I'm going through these really quickly as far as the grading, the difference between stuff I'm definitely listing and the this stuff here. I'm just looking for anything drops it below near mint status at all. So any type of problem in the surface that jumps out, like right here, you probably can't see that on camera too easily, but kind of shows up really good for me. Uh, anything like that that jumps out will keep it from getting into my near mint pile of listed of listable inventory and I just go through it really quick get it out the way and we're about halfway through them I feel like a lot of these cards will sell really quickly once they get listed those diamonds you know all the mana rocks will sell quickly oh yeah so we've got the uh, vintage pile the early modern pile foreign language this is my misprint and then this over here is just stuff that I'm it's not early modern it's not vintage but it's stuff I'm trying to collect so I've got list cards here you can see the little symbol there or they might be mystery boosters cards it's hard to tell the difference I'll figure that out later and jump start cards if I find any like unhinged you know silver border cards they would go there um, trying to think is there any other sets like that that I'm collecting but if I find any I will let you know I don't know why I'm keeping the list one list cards. It's just something that's fun to collect. It's a big project that will probably never be finished based on the way Wizards is printing all that. Thorn Thalad. Definitely had a really crappy Thalad deck back in 1994, 1997, I mean. Last stack of cards in the box. All right, that's done. So we will take these cards and stick them back, keep them separated out. So that they are they end up in my longer term storage these graded below near mint cards will get stuck in with a bunch of other similar below near mint bulk and we will figure out something to do with those later either sell them in bulk lots or trade them in at my lgs or um donate them you know there's lots of things that can be done with it and they still have value even though they're below near mint so that's a pretty standard mix of uh, from this collection anyway listable inventory versus the the below near mint stuff and the other uh random goodies mixed in so now what we'll do is we'll take this pile and we will sort it out and we're just going to go based off the the alphabetic distribution of these sets. So this is Dragon's Maze. It'll go in D. This is uh, Zendikar Rising. The reason I'm doing it this way instead of just set sorting it completely, I don't have infinite room here and there are seemingly infinite sets. I've already come across 15 different sets or some more just in these 20-25 cards. So there just wouldn't be room on any desktop that I have available in my house to sort them all out completely. So I sort them by letter. This is G for Guilds of Ravnica. 
of the beginning of the set name and then I will sort within each letter. There's another reason to go through them multiple times. This one is below near mint. It's got a little pit here, a little bit of surface stuff here, but easy to miss. Last stack. Okay, so now we've got them all separated out by the beginning letter of each set. And we'll take each one of these and we will uh, separate out each set within each of these stacks. And since it's just, uh, since we're doing a video, I'm just gonna do one or two of these stacks just to, as a demonstration. And I'll do the larger stacks since, you know, showing you how to list one lower one card isn't gonna be super helpful. And obviously this would be on a much larger scale when I'm doing the whole damn collection. This is what it looks like without having to spend hours and hours doing that. So we're gonna separate out each set within the A's which uh, I believe would be four sets. I don't think there were any Alara Reborn cards in this particular stack. And there was only one Aether Revolt. So then we'll take our each set and we will alphabetize each set. So I've taken here this little bit of Core 2021 and I have letter sorted it, and then I'm going to take these and alphabetize within each letter. And as I get them alphabetized, then I will add them to my inventory on TCG Player, and I'll show you how that goes right now. So you can see here I'm on my home page for my TCG Player se seller portal. Uh, to add inventory in the quick way without using some type of scan tool or anything you're going to go to pricing and then you've got the correct setup here and you are a correct product line here and then you'll pick the right set we're in core 2021 here it is and you want to switch on your advanced filters because you only want, well, it depends on if you have foils mixed in, but we don't have any foils, so we're gonna pick only normal. We know we're only dealing with near mint cards. We're gonna leave all rarities on just to make it so that we're not missing anything, just in case there's some rares mixed in these. I don't believe there are in this little stack of cards, but um, there may be in the future. We're gonna click apply, and then we wanna go over here. We see there's still 400 items in that list so we're going to switch it to that so it shows all of them on one page so we're not flipping through pages and forgetting to save things and this and that and the other so this shows all the cards we have listed for core 2021 um, and we're just going to go through our stack alphabetically and add these to our list so i'm looking at one copy of celestial enforcer so we'll go to celestial enforcer prices at our floor it shows we already have 27 of these in stock so we'll make it 28 next is crypt lurker same deal we now have 25 destructive tampering is next here we go make that 23 experimental overload is next this is an uncommon uh, looks like we can adjust that price to 10 cents just to be sure that we sell it and add one uh, We've got a couple of F's here fetid imp 23 Finishing blow got another one to add there Fungal rebirth is an uncommon it's sitting at our uncommon floor because we sold out so we'll add one grasp of darkness 15 igneous cur now this one, the lowest price is a penny. It says the medium price is 11 cents and we are sold out at our five cent price. So let's go check our pricing on that. Looks like there's a couple of smaller sellers that are selling them really cheap. And then there's a good solid floor here at 10 cents. So we could put ours at nine cents, compete with brothers here and feel good about that. We'll likely sell that. Also the cheapest direct seller is this one here at 10 cents. So if we go to nine cents, we should show up up here in the uh, feature box. Also check out this, the TCG player has added 
these uh, price history graphs like in the last couple of days. So if you have any thoughts on those, let me know what you think. I kind of like them. So anyway, we're back here. Igneous Kerr will set to nine cents and we have one copy. Liliana's Devotee is uncommon at our 10 cent floor. One copy. Obsessive Stitcher, same deal there. Pride Malkin, here we go. Scorching Dragonfire. I actually have a neat misprint of this card where there's uh, splotches on the card where the red ink didn't get put down. It doesn't It's not dramatic misprint, but it just looks neat. And then go to save. Now you may be wondering why this is the best way to do it. Uh, for a small stack of cards, like 20 or 30 cards like this, it's not necessarily the best way to do it. But um, let's just look at another set, say Throne of Eldraine. When you are doing multiple thousands of cards all within the same set and you have 29 copies of this to add, 151 copies of Arden Vale Paladin to add, 140 copies, copies of Arden Vale Tactician. It's best if you have them all. Uh, it, it doesn't take any longer to type in 140 than it does to type in 14 or 1. Uh, the only extra length is in sorting out the cards, which you're already doing anyway. So um, that's why it's probably the best way to do it for large quantities of bulk. Uh, I haven't tested scanning one card and then changing the quantities with the scan tool just because I've pretty much set myself up with this process. Uh, and I may do more with that in the future if that's something that you guys would be interested in me in watching me experiment with, then let me know. Um, but for right now, this is the way I'm doing it. So at this point, the cards are listed and live and just waiting to sell. Uh, so you, we've taken these cards all the way from being mixed into completely unsorted, newly purchased bulk uh, to becoming fully listed live inventory. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. I always respond back pretty quickly as uh, others in the community may have noticed. And if you want more content like this, be sure to subscribe, give us a like so that the algorithm knows what we're doing, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.